little impressions review for you guys for those of you who haven't read the title this is for Kanitsugami Path of the Goddess nice little game I've been playing for like a little while now and I wanted to get my impressions of it out because just wanted to get people to play that check it out um right now it's free on the game pass but I'm pretty sure you can pretty much find it anywhere else though but it's a cool one so what is Kanitsugami Path of the Goddess so um basically it is a tower, it's a character action game, it's a tower defense game, uh, which, correction, a hack and slash mixed with a tower defense game, which, off rip, is a little, uh, kind of strange combination, not gonna lie, but Capcom's done a really good job at putting this one out. This is not a sponsored thing by any means, I mean, necessary, I'm just letting you guys know about a cool game that, you know, thought was awesome. Wanted to let you guys know, because I would like you guys to... Go check it out. Maybe you might be interested. Things of that nature kind of tends to happen when word of mouth gets around. So I wanted to talk about it just a little bit. Now, the big thing about this game is that it has a very unique art style with the fact that it really harkens in on the, um, let's say, Okami-isms <laughs> that exist. So for those that are of you that know Okami or played it, um, Okami is a really cool game that is emphasized in its Japanese um, cultural lore with the yokais and everything of that nature. It's done in this really painterly style. Um, the best way I can describe it with this one is that although the painterly style, uh, the crazy pastel art pieces aren't really there this time around, it's going for a slightly more realistic anime aesthetic. It also still has a lot of those bits and pieces that come from that kind of art that is located in this game. When I say the, game, the art for this game is actually quite amazing, I highly recommend just taking a look. Um, you play as a spirit, but mm, I cannot remember the name right now. <laughs> you play as a spirit, basically tasked with the, uh, guiding the goddess of well, what seems to be life through a or a pre well, more like a priestess um through the mountains of uh mount fuji i believe it is um as it has been completely corrupted and you are following the paths through each of the gates in order to essentially bring all the villages that existed there before back to life because of these corrupted yokai who've gone and pretty much captured all the villagers and made life basically a living hell for everyone so in the first acts of the game, you are basically your OP self with all your abilities, your full power at your extent, and then you are defeated by the one thing uh, everyone always has to deal with, which is the final boss type territory thing. Um, upon losing this, your uh, soul, I believe his name is, uh, loses all of his abilities, and it is up to you to take your little dancing sword and bring and essentially. Uh, exercise your way back to full power every time you destroy one of the gates and well not destroy purify uh every time you purify a gate and proceed to the next stage constantly going defeating bigger and bigger battered demons uh my bad yokai <laughs> you uh find yourself getting further and further closer to your true power and upon doing that you also empower those around you because you free those villagers and set them up almost as uh turrets that you would in most tower defense games. Each of them having a different um, move set, so, so to speak, uh, way of doing things. Jobs is the best way I can describe it. <laughs> um, they're able to do you know it's a variety of things. You upgrade them actually in the very early game. You start by mainly upgrading them. Um, Soul's actual abilities are quite uh, limited in the beginning. He has like a four string combo with a couple triangle. Well, yeah, a couple 
special moves Splash about to give him a little extra flair, and that's for the most part all he gets for a while. Um, you then spend most of your points upgrading your villagers to make them better. So some of the things that you get, and I haven't gotten everyone. Granted, this is full first impression, but I'm about halfway through the game, and I wanted to just let people know how I was feeling about this one and what it was cooking. Um, but basically, you start the game by pretty much getting um, the workers, the axe wielding, um, essentially your battle turns that wait for enemies to pull up to them and then they attack them with axe attacks. Um, the woodworkers are actually pretty strong in a pretty early game. You also then follow that up with archers, which are obviously the long-range combatants of the group, who stay at a distance and have a far-reaching like range, and if you put them on higher places, they can then see more of the map, allowing them to attack from an even further distance. But, and I like actually how that works, because it starts out with them like having a cone of vision, technically speaking, going downwards, so it's a big circle for them, a radius, but it's a radius cone. <laughs> um, that then gets followed up by, I believe it's a priest type one who's able to slow down the enemy types. A sumo one is introduced at some point that's really good at stopping and being the wall himself. And you're also introduced to uh, different mechanics like you're introduced to a unit that isn't actually a unit, um, but it is the, the, the carpenter, the woodworker. Um, they're able to come through and pretty much fix uh, traps make up walls things like that that like allow you to allow you to maneuver the past in these different villages so that you can kind of careen these yokai into specific areas or to very least to block them off and kind of leave them open for your other units to come through and attack them as such now a lot of this is also really fun because it is real time so it is tower defense but also real time strategy you do spend the early parts because the game is broken up into every level is broken up into two parts that kind of change throughout it but it is the planning phase which is the daytime part and the attack phase which is the nighttime part during the day you are to basically tasked of drawing up a path I forgot this path for your priestess to follow and she's going to slowly walk that path and purify as much as she can now can she do the whole thing in one day? Not inherently, depending on the map, what place that you are, it might take several. But the idea is to have her maneuver this path that you have drawn for her, and as she purifies the village, you are to go about freeing the villagers, setting them up, giving them jobs, and putting them in specific locations so that when night falls, and she has to stop her progression for a while to rest, you guys can defend her with all your might. Because when night falls, when the yokais come, and the gate that you are trying to reach opens up and let loose waves of enemies at the time. So, really cool, not gonna lie. It's fun. Trying to come up with strategies and trying to make sure that you at least have her stop in locations that would be best beneficial for you to be able to strategically make a plan and fight accordingly. That being said, sometimes, sometimes you're put into some pretty precarious situations. There's been a couple times where I've actually had nighttime fall and I'm right in front of the gate itself so as far as defense goes it's just like everybody stand here and stop anything that could possibly attack her <laughs> but with a little bit more foresight considering that you can actually see where she'll end up given when like the uh, nighttime will fall there's actually a little silhouette that lets you know that specifically where she's at or where she will be by the time you get to nightfall uh, that tends to be, I believe it's blue if you actually can make it there and purify everything, and it's white if you can't. So just obviously a little thing that you just be like, you know, you might wanna, <laughs> might wanna have her stop a little early, just staying. That being said, super fun, very fun. I had an enjoyable time with it. So far, um, I've actually gotten to the point where you are able to properly upgrade soul. Once you're able to do that, they start introducing things like um, a bow and arrow, which is super useful for him to have, and a bunch of different arrow types, as well as a different, two different styles of fighting for him. He continues to use his sword, but two different styles, which 
in my opinion, is kind of enough to mess with the variety because initially, while I was going through the game, I did see it getting a little repetitive. And then upon the halfway point, upon reaching a certain point in the story, you, it's really kind of opens up. The moment soul, each one you're kind of gaining a different unit, which tends to help and kind of it doesn't exacerbate, it kind of mellows out a bit of the repetitive nature of it because you're kind of excited to see what new unit you're going to get. And it's upon reaching that halfway point that your moveset as playing a soul, although it does start to get a little repetitive as well, once you gain that those extra movesets and those extra little tricks that he could do, it becomes, it opens up the game a lot more, basically. But, the basic, um, your basic customization in the pretty early on games is that you, as Soul, have multiple, at least two. You can equip more as the game progresses, but from the start, you have two um, little statuette things that you can equip to yourself, talismans, and one, uh, one special move talisman. The two talismans are at, like attributes, so you can do something where uh, Soul has less health, but your villagers have more attack power or things of that nature that change how you and your characters interact, right? So, I usually went with the one that made Soul a little bit less tanky to make everyone else a little stronger, but depending, because sometimes, granted, um, some of the enemies that they throw at you are more suited for Soul to deal with than your villagers themselves. It's just like that sometimes. It's a part of the whole hack and slash part of the game. You also need to be able to get in there and defend because you are the linchpin that's keeping everyone going. Now, that being said, it doesn't stop them from throwing in some curveballs. There are some levels where you're not allowed to play a soul. <laughs> that sounds weird, but the idea being is that our uh, main priestess, your soul is directly attached to her. So when she needs purification, soul is not capable of being there to defend her because she needs to get rid of the darkness that's within her. Sounds like a lot at the time, but those levels are actually quite fun because the daytime is spent actively prepared. You have to plan ahead in every way possible to make sure that your characters are going to be set for later on. And then once the nighttime comes, although you can still switch characters around, you are a little spirit ball that can interact with them, you're not able to fight physically, which means that it's all on your villagers and your planning to make sure that you guys survive the night. Really cool whole time you're actually just gathering up little uh, US solar gathering up little spirit balls and then just delivering it to her um, but on normal ones you're like I said hack and slash game you got your backup people that are helping you I will say this one of the more creative aspects of this game are the boss fights boss fights are really fun kind of inventive and really pikmin -y is the best way I can describe it which is not something I really thought I would have had to say for this kind of game because you know most things that involve tower defense when it comes to boss fights are mainly just putting up the right defenses for something that's really big. But in this case, you are defending it, but you're going to what feels like a one-on-one -on -one arena. Just you and your boys and your priestess, who is your main health bar, so to speak, um, versus whatever this demon is. And it'll summon some of its creeps to fight, and you'll, you and your guys are going to take them on head-on. And you can switch them from attack and defense mode. That one's a, it's a really cool. One. But each yokai boss takes things and does things completely different. Um, in one level, the entire stage is dark, and I have to use all of my men to essentially go forth and light these lanterns around the arena. And once that happens, it opens them up for an, it opens the boss up, which is this giant centipede that is crawling around on the ceiling and doing a bunch of crazy stuff. It opens us up. For an attack it lets its weak points out and everyone is able to go in including yourself but until then you have to maneuver way around the darkness and make sure that she's safe while you are also keeping the aggro of the centipede on you because as long as you can keep it on you and stay far away from her then that means that you well she's not being attacked <laughs> that one was a, a tricky one for me actually because sometimes i was just like sometimes i gotta just be near her just because of the way that this is but ultimately it was one of those ones that's like really enjoyable really fun kind of a cool challenge there's plenty of other boss fights that are like that and very similar in this way of like by doing things in a certain way or moving your men in a certain way you can kind of mess around and get other things to happen it's really cool i haven't even gone through all the units 
pretty sure they have like um, just a lot of the ones I have. I know I had Dancer, um, the Woodworker, the, um, the the Priest, yeah, the Priest, Sumo, uh, Archer. I believe I got a Gunner, a Thief, which Thief is cool because there are certain units that don't even actually attack the Thief, just as fair to actually help find um, treasures and things of that nature. So then open up different paths for you to gain new talismans, more currency that you can use in the nighttime stages, or well, more currency you can use to upgrade your character so that when you get to the nighttime, your villagers are more prepared for that kind of thing. So I recommend it, actually, super recommend it. Um, the reason why I use the Alchemyisms in it is because a lot of that DNA seems to be carried over into this one. And so much, in fact, because obviously both games are made by Capcom, that Amaterasu is a skin, like her goddess form, well, her puppy form, I guess, um, is a skin for soul. Like, that and the sword are completely there for you to just use as a thing. It's kind of really cool. They even put a little statue in there uh, as an update just to do it. It's super cool. I recommend checking it out, especially if you're a fan of that kind of aesthetic. And with this game being as cool as it is, but obviously for a more niche audience, I wanted to just put out something to let you guys know what it's about or something, anything else. Like I said, this is a first impression, so I don't have a full-on review review for you guys, but it's definitely new to just let you know that this is something that exists, and I'd highly recommend going and checking it out. But, without further ado, I'm going to let you guys go. Have fun, enjoy yourselves. If you guys go want to check out the game, by all means, go check it out. But it's, it's, it is what it is. It's what we do here at Paper Play Action. We try to point you guys in the directions of really cool things. There's also a couple other things I like to point out and play and do some other stuff with. I might be doing some first impressions for certain systems, uh, like tabletop uh, RPGs and things of that nature. Well, as well as other games, maybe some movies. I mean, we try to do those kind of things now, especially. We're hoping to see more content like this going forward. Um, like I always say, guys, you guys have fun. You can always enjoy us. Hit you if you got questions for us or things like that. Hit us up at paperplayaction at gmail.com. That's paperplayaction at gmail.com. We'll answer those questions for you. If you want to, you know, follow us, go up and hit us YouTube channel. You can also follow us on obviously here. Um, you can follow us on the app, formerly known as Twitter. <laughs> um, at paper underscore action, same thing with Instagram, same thing with threads, actually. Find us on all three of those. And uh, if you wanted to support the show, you can always just jump into the description. We have a little tip box there, or you can hit us up on Patreon and just, you know, hit us up there. Uh, it goes a long way, but the number one way to support us is word of mouth. Just tell people about the show, talk to people, share the love, spread it around, let people know that we're, you know, we're doing stuff and uh, that you enjoy it and just spread the fact that you do enjoy it with the people but without further ado i'm going to bring this one to a close and i hope you guys enjoyed our first impressions review so we're out of here guys hope you guys uh, had a good one peace <laughs>